And before I start this video about Kawhi Leonard, I just want to go into a little bit. Bro, if the man going out there performing his job, doing what he's supposed to do, he don't need a voice and speak his opinion where everybody else need to do. Kawhi Leonard go out there and do what he's supposed to do, bro. He get paid to play basketball, and he do it the best of his ability to do it. So, like, the, everybody on L.A. Clippers need to be doing the same thing, doing their best to their knowledge to get the game win. If you doing everything by yourself and everybody else is not, is not doing the same thing you doing but complaining about what you're doing because you're not voicing out or speaking out or being the leader like they think you should be, that, that becomes a problem in the locker room, bro. Because you're not voicing your opinions to them to make them feel good about themselves. Bro, nah, step y'all game up. If the man going out there each and every day performing, doing what he's supposed to do, y'all supposed to do the same thing. Why is y'all passing judgment because he don't want to speak? He shouldn't have to speak. That's what leaders do. Most leaders don't speak. They show you that they're capable of doing the job. But y'all too sensitive, y'all too bitch man, y'all too feminine, y'all need somebody to speak up, to hard warm your heart, to get you to where you need to be at. And let's say if he did do it, would, would it still change? No, y'all still gonna play the way y'all wanna play. Y'all still gonna do what y'all wanna do. And by me not wasting and talking and on steam and breath is not gonna help. Y'all want a LeBron in there. Let Kawhi is not LeBron. Le LeBron going Le Kawhi gonna do what he gotta do. Kawhi go out there go play. He not gonna waste your time. He not gonna talk that bullshit. He not gonna do none of that shit. Then trade you at the end. <laughs> That's LeBron for you. No, Kawhi going to do with the NBA. With the NBA get, tells him to do. Go out there and go play basketball and get paid. That's all he do. Y'all should be doing the same thing, bro. If you worth a couple million, go play like you a couple million. If you worth a fifty million, go play like you a fifty million. If you worth a hundred million, go play like you a hundred million, bro. Stop worrying about the next man, y'all. It's too, it's 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 too feminine, bro. It's getting the NBA is getting feminine, bro. My bad. Thanks to yesterday's Woj bomb, we now know who will lead the Clippers on the sidelines next season. Ty Lue has agreed to a five-year deal Ty Lue with the franchise. Not a good Lue, leader, spent last season Trust as me. the lead assistant under Doc Rivers. That's the lead. Quasi. That's and the so lead. Ty, intimately familiar with some of the chemistry issues we saw surface throughout the season and postseason, and we got some additional details of those problems in a report in the Athletic. Teammates being rubbed the wrong way. Believing Kawhi was getting preferential treatment, like being able to live in San Diego or the games he took off for load management. So, Kendrick, Kawhi, unquestionably the best player on that team. Man. Do you think he was able to be the on-court leader of the Clippers Hell last yeah. season with just sort of the chemistry and the issues in the locker room? Yeah. And do you think that he can be that leader moving forward, and he should be? Yeah. Well, well, first of all, Rachel, who is complaining about Kawhi Leonard getting special treatment? Look, I played 14 seasons in the, in the NBA, and I played with a lot of Hall of Famers, and all of them got special treatment. It's part of being a franchise Bro. player. It's part of getting paid the big bucks. You got to deal with it. As long as they deliver on the court, Man. that's one thing. Second of all, they don't have a leader. The Clippers do not have a leader. Kawhi Leonard is not a guy that, that speaks out vocally and talks about it. He just goes out there and performs right. and does his job. And if I'm the Clippers, I would really, really consider trying to get at Rajon Rondo. They do mm. need a leader. They need a voice in that locker room that's going to hold guys accountable. It's so. It's only... I just said that, bro. But, bro, holding somebody, see, they want chemistry in the locker room. But it don't matter if you want chemistry in the locker room, bro. If you're not doing what y'all supposed to do each and every night when y'all get on the basketball court, chemistry ain't going to mean nothing. So much you could do as a coaching staff and as a head coach. You need a guy that's going to hold guys. It's not Kawhi Leonard to hold your heads, bro, to hold the whole staff and the whole NBA play, like, bro, it's not his job to hold his team in to get to where they at, bro. 
they got to remember how they got there in the first place, bro. And that's all he do is he remember how he got there in the first place by working hard, consistent, and focus on him. Uh, man, y'all, y'all get soft. NBA's getting soft. Accountable. That's going to say the right things in the locker room, and that's going to lose themselves in the team and lead by example and preach the gospel day in and day out and make sure guys don't have a hidden agenda. So right now, the Clippers do. Bro, I don't know why they won't raise Rondo. Rondo the same way. He really don't speak to players like that. If Rod, he really don't have a chemistry. Bro. He he did have chemistry with LeBron, they though, bro. Rondo the same way as Kawhi. Even though if Rondo do get on the L.A. Clippers, it'll make a whole lot of difference. It'll take a whole lot of stress off of, uh, off of Kawhi by Rondo being there, bro. But they both pretty much damn not like the same person. They go there, go do their job, and that's it, bro. That's it, bro. They, they, they don't go there and go fuck around. They go there and perform to the best of their ability and move on, bro. See, they want somebody to hold the other people's hands that been on that team. You can't hold their hands, bro. You can't make sure they good, bro. You can't do none of that, bro. You just got to make sure you good. Do not have a leader, and that's part of their problem. I, yeah, I agree with Perk. I mean, if, I, I do think it's tempting to sort of assume that guys will always be who they are and Kawhi's quiet and Paul George isn't a leader. Who knows? Maybe this season, maybe the humbling, maybe the embarrassment of what happened to them against Denver, maybe those guys make changes. They're only 29, 30 years old. We shouldn't just assume static personalities. But right now, Perk is right. I think as great a leader as Kawhi is by example, and several players there have told me, wow, we couldn't believe the work this guy puts in day to day. Just watching him was important for us. Ty Lu is the closest thing to have. I have to a personality now who's going to galvanize the locker room because you know you're going to get to the playoffs, you're going to get punched in the face, and you're going to need someone to have uncomfortable conversations to get people right. They, they, when they got punched in the face by Denver, they just fell flat on the canvas and never got up. So right now it's Ty Lue, but I'm, I'm interested to see. Ty Lue ain't going to make a difference on that team, bro. He going to get frustrated and he going to fuck around and punch one of the Clippers in the face, bro, and a fan included. Maybe the, maybe the coach too, bro. <laughs> Look, Kawhi is the best leader for that team, bro. If they say they went out there and they just watched him perform and can not believe some of the things he's doing, bro, believe in yourself. Y'all can do the same thing, bro. You don't need somebody to hold your hands. He is not your girl. He is not your boy. He not none of that, bro. You know, if, if you're looking for a companion shit, get your ass a dog. Come on, man. Y'all worth millions upon millions of dollars and y'all complaining. Talking about y'all need chemistry in the locker room. Y'all need a leader. No, you need to get on your goddamn job and stop complaining, bro. See how those two guys maybe can grow into it. It's the second year. They really barely played so. together in the first year. So I'm, I'm not sort of just going to pigeonhole them as what they are now forever. What do you think of Perk's assessment that they should go after Rajon Rondo? Uh, I think... Uh, look, I think he, he would help their team. The playoff Rondo is clearly a thing. I mean, he's probably more likely to go back to the Lakers, and they don't have any cap space really to get him, so we'll see what happens. But uh, certainly a veteran guy who has the respect of Kawhi and Paul George, who is vocal, who will talk in film sessions, who will point out rotations and this and that, anybody like that would be useful for sure. We talked about like who's the heart and soul of a team, right? It's not always the best player. Perk, is it a little more complicated on a team where a guy like Patrick Beverly is so outspoken? And in a lot of ways, the season before last represented who the Clippers were, right? That feistiness, the performance that he put on against the Golden State Warriors in the first round of the playoffs that year. Uh, what, what are the sort of complexities in a locker room? And, and by the way, the Clippers are not the only team we've seen this with, where your most vocal player, the most sort of feisty and sort of energy player, is not your best player. Ha! <laughs> Right, and, and look, just and I love Patrick Beverly, and I strongly believe the tenacity that he brings to that team, he gives them swagger, but that don't make him a leader because he never been to the promised land. He never won a championship, so he don't know what it takes to get there. Bruh. And being a leader, you have to be able to adjust. You have to ha handle everyone differently. And I say this all the time, just because you're the star player, doesn't make you the leader of that locker room. I've been on plenty of locker rooms, especially in 2008, 
where James Posey was our leader. Mm -hmm. He was uh, the guy that was doing majority of the talking. And, and so you live and you learn. And I think Patrick Beverly, especially in the, this past season when he was in the bubble, he learned from his mistakes uh, of walking that fine line of talking noise and actually being a real leader. And I think he will. Percival will be the wrong person to lead the Clippers, bro. They not going to never win no championship if he leaves them, bro. Kawhi Leonard is the best one. He just need, he just, he, he need a Ray John. He need a Pasibel. But he don't need nobody in that voice in the MP. People so already know what they supposed to do, bro. It's as simple as that, bro. Stop fucking complaining. Ain't nobody there that's supposed to be holding y'all hands to be getting y'all to where y'all need to be at. You don't, you don't need nobody to hold your hand to get you to the promised land. You're supposed to be getting yourself there. Like, come on, man. Stop. Yeah, yeah, Y'all complaining too much. Just, I love them, but they need a leader, Rachel. They need a leader in their locker room. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I love the way Pat Beverly goes about his business. I think maybe not so much on the engaging Damian Lillard again. I wouldn't necessarily advise that.